Welcome back to Core 4 Adventures. I'm Carol. And I'm Laura. So you booked your very first cruise. Now what? You know, I know when we booked our first cruise, I had so many questions and we did a ton of research. So today we're going to go over the top 10 questions that first time cruisers have before they cruise. So hopefully we will make you well prepared and ready for your first cruise. Starting with question number one, what kind of documents do I need to bring on a cruise? Well, of course you need to bring your government issued photo ID as well as your passport if required and any cruise documents. Now there are times where you can sometimes cruise out of a US port and back into a US port with only your photo ID and a birth certificate, but they really recommend that you take a US passport and here is why. If you are stopping off at a port in a foreign country and let's say you miss the ship, you're going to want to have a passport in order to get back home. Or if you are injured while you are traveling, you're going to want to have a passport as well. And it's really important to keep all of those documents organized and in a safe place. So we highly recommend getting a folder to put all of your cruise documents in and make a hard copy of everything, including copies of both that passport and government issued ID. And just for safekeeping, take and make another copy and leave that at home with a trusted friend or in a safe place just in case. So question number two, how much should I budget for onboard expenses? Now you might be thinking, hey wait, didn't I book an all-inclusive vacation? You did, but there will be some extras when you are on board. So think about what you're gonna be spending money on, whether it's tips, excursions, shopping, specialty dining, or onboard activities. Now some of these charges can be prepaid, and most activities on the ship will be charged to your onboard account and they will charge the card that you have on file with the cruise line before disembarking. Do make sure that you check that account on a regular basis and you can do that either on their app, in your room, or at guest services. Now you will want to have some cash and small bills on hand for tips. For people like the porters at the cruise port, maybe a taxi driver, pedicab, or anybody who's leading a shore excursion. I encourage you to check your cruise line's website for more guidance on this. Speaking of tipping, question number three is, do I need to tip the cruise staff? And if so, how much? So tipping is usually recommended, but guidelines will vary from cruise line to cruise line. It's usually customary to tip people such as your cabin steward, the dining staff, and others. And it's always nice to throw a little tip to your bartender, but it's certainly not required. Most cruise lines that cater to U.S. passengers have an automatic daily gratuity that is applied to your account, and they highly recommend that you prepay this gratuity ahead of time, and that it is based on a per-person cost per day. And if you don't prepay this gratuity, it will be applied to your onboard account, and you will be expected to clear that balance before disembarkation. Now, you can go to guest services and have that removed, but really, these people work very hard to make sure that your vacation is incredibly magical, and they deserve those tips. So question number four. What is included in your cruise fare? Well, of course your accommodations are included because you're on the cruise ship and you're gonna be staying there every night just like in a hotel. Plus your meals are included. You can eat at the buffet, the main dining rooms, and the pubs. They do have specialty dining restaurants on board that you pay a little bit extra for, but you can either buy a specialty dining package or you can pay for those meals a la carte. Additionally, entertainment and most facilities on board are going to be included in that cruise fare. Now there are some activities that will have an upcharge, such as the go-karts on NCL and the roller coaster on Carnival, but check with your cruise line to see exactly what is and isn't covered. Question number five, is travel insurance necessary to go on a cruise? While it is not mandatory, it is highly recommended, and any travel insurance you purchase should at the very least cover both medical emergencies and trip cancellations. You just never really know what's going to happen when you are traveling. You could miss a ship in port, you could have something be canceled, or you could have a medical emergency where you're going to want to have that extra coverage. Personally, I was set to go to Paris in March of 2020, and of course, my trip got canceled. Thanks to my travel insurance, I got refunds for absolutely everything that I booked, including our hotels and airfare. Question number six, are there formal nights and what should I wear? The answer is yes. 
there are still formal nights or dress up nights on most cruise lines and they encourage you to bring either formal or semi-formal attire along on your vacation or again maybe something just a little dressier than normal. I think that you should check your individual cruise lines website to find out more details for your cruise. Absolutely. A lot of cruise lines do still offer a formal night but for example NCL does not offer formal nights while Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, and Carnival all do. Definitely check with your individual cruise line and even if they offer a formal night, there's ways around it if it's just not your bag. You can always attend the buffet that night. And if you do like to dress up but it doesn't offer a formal night, go for it anyway. We did on NCL and had a great time. Question seven, what activities and entertainment are available on board? Cruises offer a variety of activities, including shows, pools and water slides, mini golf, and themed events. There's always something for everyone. Check your daily planner. And some of the things that we've personally enjoyed on a cruise are Broadway caliber shows, some comedians, trivia games, and cover bands. Question number eight. Can I bring my own alcohol and beverages on board? It really varies from cruise line to cruise line on what they will allow you to bring on board in terms of alcohol and other beverages. So I encourage you to check your individual cruise line's website for more details. For example, NCL will allow you to bring as much wine as you want on per stateroom, and there is a corkage fee of $15, but it's waived if you have their drink package. Royal Caribbean and Holland America will only allow you to bring one bottle of wine per stateroom on board, and there is a corkage fee on Holland America. However, Royal Caribbean will also allow you to bring a 12 pack of soft drink or soda. Now these policies change all the time, so it's really important to check what the policy is on the day that you will be cruising before you show up at the cruise port. Number nine, what are shore excursions and how do I book them? Shore excursions are guided tours or activities at the ports and they can really make your vacation. Now, if you're gonna book your shore excursion through the cruise line, you can do this either ahead of time on the website or the app, or you can do it when you're on board through the shore excursion desk. The great thing about booking a shore excursion through the cruise line is if something goes wrong, the cruise ship will wait for you. They won't sail away without you. Now, you don't have to book a shore excursion. You can do the port by yourself, but watch your time and don't be a peer runner. And it is perfectly acceptable to book an excursion through an outside company. Lots of times they're cheaper and they offer you the same return time guarantee. My advice is just do your research and make sure that you pick the right shore excursion for you because it really can make or break your vacation. Question number 10, are there any special considerations for seasickness? Well, of course there are. You're gonna be out in the middle of the ocean. If you're gonna get seasick, this is where it's gonna happen. So we recommend that you are proactive and bring along with you some preventative medication. If you'd like to learn more, we do have a packing tips video that I've linked right here. And there's lots of great things on the market these days, including Bonine, Dramamine, C-bands, and fish patches. And it's all about location, location, location. If you are prone to motion sickness, you may want to book a cabin that is on a lower deck and in the center of the ship. If you're out and about during the day and the seas kick up, again, go to the center of the ship on a lower deck and that'll help out. And a lot of people that suffer from motion sickness really appreciate having a balcony cabin so that they can step outside and get some fresh air. There's also things that you can eat to help, such as green apples and ginger chews. I highly recommend going by the buffet on the first day or two and grabbing a green apple or two and keeping it in your room because when those seas kick up, they will be hard to find. So that concludes our list of the top 10 most frequently asked questions for first time cruisers. And don't forget, we do encourage you to check with your individual cruise line to find out their unique policies and regulations before you go on your first cruise. And if you do have a question that we didn't answer, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Or if you have a tip that we didn't suggest, we'd love to hear that too. Thank you so much for watching today. And if you found this video helpful, we'd really love it if you gave it a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Core 4 Adventures. Bye. Bye.